So Call of Duty is a franchise that a lot of people have been saying is in danger of becoming stagnant lately. A lot of the last couple of games have started to feel a little too similar for most people. So along comes Sledgehammer Games making their first major entry in the franchise, Advanced Warfare. And they're promising that it's going to be the game that changes everything. That it's going to be the one that completely revitalizes Call of Duty. Now that I've had a week to play it, what do I think? Does it live up to that promise, or is it another copy-and-paste first-person shooter like we've been getting the last couple of years? The answer is a confusing mix of both that does a lot of things right and a lot of things wrong. And on that note, we're going to dive right in. So first, let's talk about the campaign. It starts off promisingly enough. The first mission follows the player as Private Mitchell, a U.S. Army Ranger who is fighting alongside his best friend, Private Will Irons. The two of you are dropped into South Korea in order to fight against the North Korean invasion force that's happening. Things go wrong pretty quickly, and when your best friend is killed and you lose an arm, things start to go a little crazy. You're discharged from the military, but you're approached with an interesting proposition by Will's dad. Jonathan Irons, played by Kevin Spacey, who just so happens to be the CEO of the largest defense contractor in the world, who presents you with the chance to get a robotic arm to replace your missing one, and to come to work at his defense contractor as essentially a soldier for hire, a job that you accept. Now this starts out with a lot of promise, especially with Kevin Spacey's character, Jonathan Irons. And in fact, that's one of the biggest disappointments about the campaign, is that he's such a cool character. He does such a good job of exploring that whole moral gray area of efficiency versus morality, because he's a character that makes his whole point about getting things done, regardless of what it takes to get there. He has no allegiance to a government or anything. He is there to take your money and do the job you want, and do it right, regardless of what he has to do to accomplish that. And he's a character that starts off with the potential to be just the greatest villain Call of Duty has ever had. But a little more than halfway through, he pulls a complete face heel turn, flips around, and becomes a generic Call of Duty bad guy who wants to take over the world because evil, and no other reason. And it's really disappointing because he was such a great character and it had so much potential to tell such an interesting story. And it did for the first half because it touches on this guy and his whole... Mo <sighs> it's just disappointing. He was such an interesting character for the first half of the game and then he just becomes a total cardboard cutout Call of Duty villain that just wants to take over the world because he's a bad guy and we need a villain that isn't sympathetic so you'll have no problem with killing him at the end. <sighs> it's kind of disappointing. But that's not to say that the entire campaign is a wash. There are some fun missions and some of the set pieces are pretty interesting. But even this feels like kind of a letdown because most of the set pieces are things that we've seen before. There's a little, like, hover bike kind of chase through a city that feels very reminiscent of every other you're on top of a fast-moving vehicle avoiding enemies set piece that we've seen since the snowmobiles in Modern Warfare 2, a set piece which, might I add, Call of Duty has been trying and failing to replicate ever since it first showed up. There's also a mission later on in the game where you escape from this bioweapons facility only to come out into a an outer courtyard area that looks ripped directly from the original Black Ops. So yeah, in case you can't tell, I was pretty disappointed by this game's campaign. That's not to say it's terrible, the level design is still really good, and there are a few set pieces that are pretty exciting. But even those set pieces are ones that you've experienced a half dozen times already in previous Call of Duties. There's just very little to this campaign that really feels all that new, and the exosuits do very little to alleviate that. In theory, they're supposed to give you all kinds of 
boosted mobility and, and increase your strength and just give you all kinds of powers to, to just let you like dart around the battlefield and flank around enemies, which is a cool idea, but the levels are very rarely designed in a way to take advantage of that, say for either scripted events or very obviously telegraphed moments where it's very clear that you're supposed to, hey, look, you can use your boost jump to get up to that ledge and snipe down on the enemies. Aside from these very obvious moments like that, there are very few times in the game where the levels are really designed in a way that facilitates the kind of, of mobility and speed that these exosuits are supposed to allow you. And I will give the game, I will give the game credit because later on in the campaign towards the end, there are a few levels that really open up and give you a lot of space and actually allow the exosuits to shine. And those are probably the best missions in the campaign. But for the most part, the levels are just designed to linear and frankly just too Call of Duty-ish to really facilitate that kind of mobility. Which is a shame because if the levels had been designed to take advantage of the exosuits better, I could almost forgive the game's narrative failings, but unfortunately, the exosuits don't really change things much either. Say for a couple of missions, this is the exact same Call of Duty you've been playing for the last six years. The campaign is not anything special, and I honestly, unless you just really need the achievements or just really love Kevin Spacey, it, I can honestly say that the campaign you can absolutely give a pass and you're not missing much of anything. So judging by what I've said so far, you probably think I hate this game. And I don't. I don't even hate the campaign. I just think it's disappointing. But every single bit of that disappointment flies out the window when we start talking about the competitive multiplayer. This is my favorite competitive multiplayer Call of Duty since the original Black Ops, and that's not something I say lightly. The competitive multiplayer is absolutely everything you have been promised. I it's I don't know where to begin. I have I haven't enjoyed Call of Duty multiplayer this much in a very long time. For starters, unlike the campaign, the competitive multiplayer actually does really allow the exosuits to shine. All that added mobility with the, the double jumps that you're given and the slides you can make to the side all actually factors in here and really changes the gameplay because the multiplayer levels are by definition more open than the campaign. And you have all kinds of just different routes and paths you can take that would never have even been available in previous Call of Duties. You know, you can be in the middle of a gunfight and be surrounded by two two guys shooting at you so you can jump up onto a rooftop, slide down off the side and circle around and catch them off guard and flank them. You can use it to catch up to an enemy you would have otherwise lost. The exosuits add a huge, almost just this new layer of tactics to the multiplayer experience that just really, it sounds like a small thing, but it makes a much bigger difference than I would have expected. And they, they added lots of stuff to the customization, too. Much like Ghosts did, you can customize your character model with different base models, and then you can change the, the clothes and the armor and whatnot that your character is wearing. Creative class is as deep as ever, but they added something really cool that I, I like a lot in that when you unlock new score streaks to progress through, you can customize your score streak which requires it to have a higher barrier of entry, but it, it gives you a better effect. And the example I like to use is the one that I take, which is for the care package, which I believe is normally a 550 point streak. But there's a bonus I take that makes it not show up on enemy radar and makes it so that the enemy team does not get an announcement when you call in a care package, which boosts the score requirement up to 650 points. And every score streak has five or six of these that you can potentially add, which have varying degrees of use. The better ones are more expensive and add more to the overall cost. It's, it's a small thing, but it's just a cool change that, that 
it's it's hard to explain. There's something about the competitive multiplayer that I just really like. It feels like it actually tries to make a lot of changes, which again is something I haven't really been able to say since since the original Black Ops. It carries over a sort of pick 10 style system. You have a set amount of points and the various guns and attachments and perks and whatnot that you have will all take up a point and you can take away, say, a perk to make room for extra abilities for your exosuit, which, by the way, you the exosuit abilities are completely independent from your perks, and they're a lot of fun themselves. I'll get into them a little bit later. You can you can take away attachments to make room for, for little specializations that will allow you to, say, have two primary weapons instead of a primary and a secondary. Things like that that are pretty cool. Um... The, it's, it's just a great multiplayer experience. It really is. The exosuit mobility does a lot to really kind of change the feel of the gameplay. And the customization options are just... They're, the, every change this game makes to the competitive multiplayer is a welcome addition to the formula. And it's just refreshing because for the last three years now... Call of Duty multiplayer has just been sitting on this formula that it knows works and it knows it does well and it's been getting repetitive and boring and they've been catching a lot of flack for it and finally there's a Call of Duty that has come along and actually made some significant changes to the gameplay formula and they work the competitive multiplayer is excellent and of course it helps that the guns are great the maps are well designed and the modes are a lot of fun, but just the exosuits alone change enough of the fundamentals of the gameplay to make this just a totally different experience from previous Call of Duties and one that I, I, I love. And I hate that I love it because I enjoyed hating Call of Duty, but it doesn't change the fact that I love it. The competitive multiplayer for this game is amazing, and I know it sounds like I'm gushing, and I am, but it's only because this is the first time I have enjoyed competitive multiplayer in a Call of Duty game since, like, 2010. I think the original Black Ops was the last Call of Duty game that I really enjoyed playing online, until Advanced Warfare. And I think that says a lot, that it is actually, it's something I could potentially see myself regularly playing. And I never say that about competitive multiplayer games, period. It's just, it's amazing. If you, where everything that the single player does wrong, the multiplayer does absolutely right. I, I cannot say enough good things about the competitive multiplayer. And that's pretty much all there is to talk about in Advanced Warfare. There is technically a co-op mode in the form of Exo Survival, but it's really just a survival mode on the competitive multiplayer maps. It's fun enough, but it's not really anything exciting, and frankly, I'd rather just play Horde or, or even Nazi Zombies. It, it's a survival mode. It's not really going to hold your attention terribly long, but it's there, and it's something to experiment with. So at the end of the day... What kind of score does Advanced Warfare get? How does it hold up? If you're looking for a great competitive multiplayer experience, I absolutely recommend this to you. It is the best game out there right now this year as far as competitive multiplayer is concerned. It's phenomenal. That said, if you're not really a big fan of competitive multiplayer, you should definitely pass on Advanced Warfare or at least wait until the price drops significantly. I like to think of this game as suffering from, from almost home front syndrome, if you remember that game. Phenomenal competitive multiplayer, really lackluster single player. If you're looking for, for a Call of Duty campaign that ditches the, the franchise's conventions and really goes in in daring new directions, you're going to be terribly disappointed because as far as the campaign is concerned, this is just another formulaic copy and paste Call of Duty game with robots in some of the missions and, and, and four-legged tanks, which are admittedly pretty cool. 
That said, if you're looking for a competitive multiplayer experience that changes things up and does enough to, to differentiate itself from its predecessors, you're going to enjoy this game. The competitive multiplayer is excellent, and I highly recommend it. Unfortunately, that's all there really is to the game, as Exo Survival is essentially an afterthought, and the campaign is very disappointing. So unfortunately, I can't give this game that high of a rating. So what is the final score then? A 7.75 out of 10. If you're looking for a great competitive multiplayer experience, this game is for you. Everyone else should pass. So, as always, thanks for watching, guys. I am Alman98 here. Let me know what you thought of this review in the comments below, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video. And it is going to be a great video, I promise you. There is a big game that is about to turn 10 years old, and if you can guess what that game is in the comments section, I will give you a cookie of whatever flavor you choose. I'm kidding. I'm not going to mail you a cookie. But it's going to be a great video, I promise. It's going to be an awesome video. But anyways, as always, I am Alabman98 here, and thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you very soon. Bye, guys.